Welcome back to Four Speed Ahead. It is a long year. We're back here live. We did uh, take a break. Uh, right here at Freightways Live here in Chicago. I am Craig, and I'm exhausted. This is Four Speed Ahead. Eric, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, Craig. How are you? Uh, this is your hometown here this in Chicago. This is my hometown. Born and raised. Wait, and you've, have you ever lived anywhere other than Chicago? I have not. So this always is Chicago. always Chicago. Always Chicago. Ha now you're at Redwood Logistics. Yep. Uh, you rent, run technology for Redwood. What? And it's you guys have shifted uh, from just managing and uh, basically being a uh, uh, being in the freight business to actually moving to technology. Yeah. Yeah. So we got our roots in brokerage, and uh, it's it's been an awesome journey. And brokerage is still a, a major, massive part of our business. Uh, but over time, we realized that our customers have more than just the freight that they're brokering to us. There's a lot more there. And so we started offering managed transportation services, which led to uh, us uh, integrating implementing TMSs for customers because at first we were analyzing data and showing them how to you know, optimize. And then from there it became, well, if we give them a TMS, they can automate it. And then that led to, well, they need to connect it. And so we kind of went through that whole cycle, which led to the evolution to where we are today. So you wrote a platform business. Yeah. You guys call it Redwood Platform. Redwood Platform Services, yeah. And what is what is that exactly? So it's actually what, what we were kind of chatting about. So it's it's kind of this um, this way for us to bring the simplicity of uh, enterprise connectivity to the market. So we've been through every integration platform out there, and we always had a struggle, which is how do we scale? How do we get past? Uh, you know, just connecting point-to-point -point systems, connecting shippers to TMSs, connecting carriers in, and we're like, we need a better way to do this. And so after kind of struggling with this for quite some time, uh, we built our own platform called Redwood Connect, and, uh, you know, it was great to demo it uh, here at FreightWaves today. Um, but what that really is is a platform for innovation, and innovation requires people to help get it done. So what Redwood Platform Services is, is it's the Redwood Connect platform, which is our integration platform as a service, but there's also 100 logistics experts that work with shippers and carriers and other 3PLs that have their... Um, their business needs described to us, and then we actually dis do a discovery session, we design their supply chain, and we automate the whole thing for them with our platform. So what does it mean when you say connected, and you're, what does it all mean in terms of connectivity? So uh, I think what, if, if we start with what it doesn't mean is with systems are, you have double entry. So I have my ERP system, I have my orders, I have my purchase orders, sales orders, inbound, outbound, and those end up being this, uh, uh, frustrating experience and you know this was more more common several years ago where people are doing data entry and double entering things or they would do an integration it would fail and they say oh this purchase order in my uh, order management system isn't in the TMS and I'm having a hard time finding it and what we did is we said well can we connect that in real time can we do it at scale and can we have it uh, move away from being an IT task uh, which is what it used to be, to being something that business users can do. Someone that understands what a purchase order looks like, what a shipment looks like, what a tender or a tracking update looks like, and have them do the uh, dragging and dropping of what happens in between these systems. So the systems are fully connected. The value proposition is that uh, there's not the double entry as you described. So it mitigates a lot of the issues that happen with you know, information being lost in terms of uh, 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 keying entry errors that may happen. So yep. all of that information is available. There's a lot of connectivity systems out there in the fray. I mean, what makes this different? So we look at it from like this two-pronged approach. Number one is from the technical side, right? So things like infrastructure and security. To your point, messages being lost can never lose a message, can never have a, a tracking update or, or an order that doesn't go through. If something does go wrong and customers send bad data, you have to get to it quickly, find it, resolve it so it can get into the appropriate system, TMS, WMS, whatever. Um, but then the second part of this is the business value and the business outcome. And that's where it becomes really important for us where we say, how do you want to automate and optimize your supply chain? Do you want to have things that, you know, how do you get to no touch? How do you get uh, tenders and tracking updates automatically going through into a place where you can manage by exception? So if we take that connectivity and then we layer it on top of, and we layer it on top of our ability to, uh, you know, sign a sort of connect uh, business opportunities as well as the, the data itself, all of a sudden there's meaning. And so the reason we built it to your, ourselves to your question is because we just didn't find a system 
that gave us the ability to scale at the speed and the, and the flexibility that we needed where every shipper is different, their data is different, the way they send it is different, and these patterns of reusability are great, but when everyone is different, we needed an easier way, and, and that's why we've invested in this. So you guys, are, you guys are transitioning into more of a SaaS business. Do you think of yourself as a SaaS business? Is that how you guys approach the market? Or is this a SaaS business combined with a traditional freight movement platform? You know, I think it's important that we need to be what our customers want us to be. And as a top tier logistics provider, I think it's most important that we remember that our core business driver is to be a logistics company. But how do we make our customers better and make ourselves better has really come from opening up this SaaS side of the business where we can say, these type of investments for connectivity and integrations are normally very large six-figure investments that are complex and prohibit people from getting the other SaaS software that they want. So with this plethora of SaaS tools coming to the market, if we can offer up a way for them to say, oh, I would like to integrate Salesforce and Oracle Transportation Management and Banyan and Forkites and all of these different applications and, and blend them together to create a better logistics experience, we can do that as a SaaS company as well as help them with their freight. So it really is that we have two pillars now. One is traditional logistics management as well as freight management services. And then the other is offering up our expertise and know-how that helped us become who we are and offering it to the market as a SaaS product. So Eric, a lot of technology investment has gone into the space. You guys are private equity funded. CI Capital is, yep. is behind Redwood. Um, but there's this also side of venture that's getting a lot of, you know, these valuations are getting quite yep. extensive. How do you think about what's happening with the investment cycle in the space? Yeah, it's neat to watch, and uh, we, we've been actually watching that from both angles. So um, what we've been doing within Redwood is certainly watching the market, right? And there's the freight recession and what's happening to valuations, right? And so on your traditional EBITDA multipliers, you know, you can see that volatility. And then certainly from the SaaS side, there's a different multiplier there when you look at company values. But what we're also doing is we're getting ingrained in that VC community. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, some folks on our board that are part of the VC community and we actually have a few folks within our organization now that are part of what we're calling Redwood Ventures that are looking at these startups and uh, engaging with them, understanding what they're working on, what are their challenges, can we introduce them into our ecosystem? Because what we've been saying and what we're doing with Redwood Platform Services is being open and inclusive. So if we can find these startups and find a way for them to not only get exposed perhaps to us as a business for us to leverage their technology, but for them to potentially have access to our customers, we can introduce them and then see what's going on with them and what kind of value they truly bring, then I think it becomes less speculative in terms of what's going on in the VC space right now. And to us, it becomes more quantitative, which is our customers like this or they don't like this, or we use this tool or we don't use that tool, which makes it a lot more meaningful and, and less of a, of a gamble, if, if you will. So you guys are making venture investments, early stage investments. Any that you want to talk about? I'm sorry? Any that you want to talk about? Uh, not particularly yet. It's still very early for <laughs> not us. Not going to disclose yeah. it. Uh, your not, board and investors may not appreciate us doing that. Maybe, maybe so, not quite but we yet. Do but hear, we, why would an early stage company want Redwood as an investor? What would be the value you bring to them? Um, you know, not to overly talk about us and our culture, but we really care. Um, we really care about meeting the right startups that have something valuable. Um, you know, we when we meet some of these players, um, you can see their passion or a problem that they solved. And so then if we take it from there, then we're like, okay, can that apply to our brokerage or to our trucking company or to our managed services side? And so when we, when we talk to them, it, it almost becomes a way to say, yes, I understand, but more than just from a financial perspective, I understand because I have that pain point or my customer has that pain point and I think you can help them out. So it almost becomes a, a multiplier effect where we can really listen to them and then get a way to almost directly take them to a potential client and say, is this a match? Should you pivot before you spend all this money and waste time? Can we get you towards a target demographic or a customer and kind of get to that MVP in a, in a faster, you're, safer way? You're talking about the startups themselves. The startups themselves, yeah. But it, it strikes me, you know, you have 
as a as an early stage startup, we, we talk a lot about tribal knowledge of having experience in the space, which I think gives us an advantage of understanding what's happened. You guys do as well. Yeah. I mean, you you you're foundationally built as a transportation company. You think like the buyers of these technologies. Um, it seems like that you would have a perspective on the market be quite different than the institutional money. Do you think that it better informs your decisions, or do you I, think it sometimes it clouds it? You know. I, I think it's a neat balance, and I don't think it clouds it. I think that we're trying to be nimble and agile, and you know, when we work with our PE, our PE ownership, you know, we're looking at it from a more disciplined, more financial perspective. But then we look at some of these startups, and, and you know, when when something feels right, and we can find that pain point. I know I, I kind of keep reiterating this point, but it, it's kind of our thesis on this, right? Can it help our business? Is it something we believe in? Can we help integrate those companies to their customers faster? And can they add value to our customers? And we actually did a lot of thinking about this and created our criteria for what we think is a sound investment. And if it matches that criteria, we believe in it. And then we take our knowledge to your point and that tribal knowledge and we're like, okay, now here's what we love and here's what we're a little bit worried about. And we're pretty candid with our feedback. Where do you see the biggest opportunities in the space? It's a great question. Um, you know, I'd like to think it's connectivity and integration because that's what we're working on, um, but we really believe it. Um, but I think that, you know, ranging from things like RPA and, and automating processes to everything in the digital fro freight brokerage space, that's a really, really neat play, but I do think we're early innings on that. Um, I think the biggest opportunity, perhaps, is actually around, you know, how can you take the almost fundamental challenge of logistics, which is what does everyone struggle with and present it to humans in a better way? So, for example, if you're a broker, right, do I want to automate everything entirely or do I want to leverage all of this technology capacity to give almost a dashboard view to our reps and to, uh, you know, the folks that have to make decisions in a more meaningful way, better user experience, almost similar to what you're doing with Sonar where I can't give you the answer, but I can give you a lot of really great details that get you pretty darn close so that you can be a better executor and operator. Yeah, it strikes me, you know, freight is still a people-centric business. I mean, at the end of the day, you still have to have humans. But if we can better inform the context of managing exceptions, because you think about, you know, it's interesting because you, you see a lot of venture investing in the sort of digital uh, players. And yeah. the idea in the, you know, five years ago, the message was it's going to be all electronic and automated. And then they, they added a bunch of human elements, whereas traditional freight companies went from adding humans to adding technology. Is that, I mean, is that where Redwood, would, in terms of sort of blending both the technology elements and the human element? Yeah, you know, I think I think what we're seeing, we always kind of do this graph, this chart, where, you know, the digital brokers start up here, and then they're adding people, so they're becoming more analog, and the analog brokers, you know, and that's where <laughs> we've lived, right? We're, we're becoming more digital and adding more technology, and there's this convergence happening. But I, I think that it's a... Um, it, it's it's almost something where if you think about like how machine learning works, right? There's this challenge where it gets smarter by seeing the same thing over and over. And if you talk to anyone in our space, the big challenge is there's a new problem every single day that we haven't seen before, and all of these variables change. And there's so many variables to find correlations against. And you know, certainly you can find correlation, but it doesn't necessarily impact it every day to the point where you can predict it. So I think the sweet spot right now that we're looking for is where do we find these correlation patterns that almost end up at a place where it's a high degree of certainty, but we still need human beings with years of experience to kind of give it that sniff test. And we're seeing that balance, and certainly that 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 intersection point will rise and will continue to rise, but there's just so many variables that that intersection is where more humans are coming into the digital and, and obviously the analogs are going upwards. You know, it strikes me when you guys talk about connectivity, you talk about artificial intelligence, you talk about the depth. You're a top 10 3PL, is that? Correct. 4PL. Uh, it's always hard to figure out where 4PL start and 3PLs uh, stop. Somewhere like I, that, yeah. I, I am still trying to get my head around it. But in terms of freight under management, you guys have a massive business. And it strikes me as if you're going to automate it, and you talked about machine learning, those models do get smarter as more flow uh, is created, that you have an advantage over some of the upstarts which have had to sort of cold start their business. Yeah. You think, is that a fair, uh, or is it is it difficult culturally to shift into this automated fashion? You know, 
So we've, uh, the, the honest answer is we've actually been automating up to like 80% efficiency for years prior to introducing machine learning into our organization. So adding things like no touch, uh, you know, operations and, you know, uh, a managed services group where we can, um, you know, leveraging Connect, we get those orders streaming in from their enterprise and we just have all of these rules on how to manage that freight by exception. So how do we handle it, you know, from planning and procurement to quote and tender and, you know, invoices and reconciliation and sending it all the way to accounting. We've automated that, you know, for almost 10 years now. And so what we do is we really deal with those exceptions. So I would argue that in the managed services space where there is a bit more room for, for that automation is, is actually in robotic process automation for some of this more mundane stuff that needs to take place that's still manual just because of how fragmented our industry is. But, you know, doing managed transportation well and, and managing by exception only, it works pretty darn well already. Um, but to your point with that data and what you can do with it, yes, there's certainly a lot of opportunity there, but we're also pretty pretty stern about making sure that our customers' data stays safe and it remains within their tenancy and that we don't actually do anything with it that they don't want us to do. So we're pretty transparent about it. So they, all, they know their data has stayed there, that you're optimizing to make their business more efficient, but you're not cross-pollinating between We're not cross-pollinating, and we're actually feeding it back to them. So one of our products, Redwood Insight, is actually a data pipeline where when they have all their information running in our managed services environment, or they're just a TMS customer, we actually pump that data right back to them, whether they use you know Amazon Redshift or they have their own SQL data warehouses. We actually take their data and we feed it right back to them in a way that makes sense or fits their existing uh, BI model and their data warehousing strategy so that they can start taking advantage of transportation data, whereas before it was kind of this just like mysterious thing that they couldn't manage. Yeah, we, so best definition for PL. Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> it's a 5PL minus one. <laughs> okay, what's a 5PL? Five parties? No, I, you know, I, it's funny. So I, so we, we've thought about this. So so on the 3PL, three, three right, third-party logistics, and I know Accenture, right, they coined 4PL with, with what they did there, but I, I think it's introducing a level of uh, on sourcing or, or on uh, you know on site outsourcing or some technology. I'm not the best I'm, definition I've heard. I'm not even sure. Is that the four PLs minus the three PLs? That that was like when that somebody said that to me, I was like, I sort of get it. Yeah, it's like a Russian doll I, problem. I, I yeah. guess, man. This business, <laughs> I think that's a way to sort of coin a term where right. you're doing it. But it's it's an interesting space. I, a lot's happening, a lot of technology. Anything here that excited you? That's, that isn't, I mean, you guys did a yeah, demo. We did. You feel pretty good about uh, what you guys presented? Yeah, we feel great. We love it. Um, we've put a lot of uh, hard work into And this is the Connect Redwood Connect. Yeah, this is the Redwood Connect platform. So it's our drag and drop, uh, no code integration platform as a service. So we look at ourselves as logistics integrators. And um, we really, we've put 10 years of, uh, blood, sweat, and tears of this, and we've actually been live on this platform for five years, um, and this is now our entirely cloud-native, um, totally homegrown platform that just scales indefinitely and does what our customers want them to do. It makes it easy. And to anything else that you saw that isn't Redwood? Um, yeah, there's a lot of neat stuff here. I actually really like the Adelic guys uh, and what they're doing for in-cab safety. I think they're pretty sharp. Um, I think there's some really neat startups here. Um, and it's actually really just great to see this ecosystem and community that has kind of been built here. Um, and you start seeing familiar faces and collaboration and working with partners that you normally don't. It's been great. Yeah, it's interesting because I've been talking to a lot of executives here and, and investors as well. And, and one of the things that I, I think is interesting is if you go to a traditional show, like a, like a, a TIA or, or the, the big ATA, you have a lot of executives there. But a lot of the technologists are, unless they're invited to speak, they're they're usually not the ones on the floor. Yeah. Whereas here you have the technology decision makers. Yeah. Uh, and you've been pretty influential. You've been at Redwood for how many years? 15 years. Yeah, okay, so you were there in the early days. Yeah. Did you help start? Did you help launch the company? Uh, I joined four years after they started. Yeah, okay. I helped uh, build the first TMS. Got it. Yeah. And But you've transitioned into more of the strategy from around technology and right. being much more empowered now that you guys have private equity and are yeah. doing some acquisitions. As you bring and you do these acquisitions, you, you, you guys made a large acquisition last year. Yeah. Um, Stripe Logistics, right? Yep. And you've, you've made a couple more, right? We have, yeah. 
as you bring those together, are they all on the same platform or do you maintain them separately? They are. So, so there's three pillars to our business, Move, Manage, and Innovate. So Move is our brokerage, our fleet, and, uh, and our Mexican cross-border. And within Move, that's the biggest part of our business, the brokerage. Um, that has come together and it was actually pretty darn impressive. We integrated those business units within in 89 days. So wow. in under 90 days, we moved a business twice as big onto the Strives platform, uh, onto the TMS Load Runner, and it's been great. You know, it was it was uh, it was an unbelievable feat that that our IT department pulled off. It's, it strikes me that connectivity when you get good at integrating companies you acquire, you actually go, good at integrating different systems. Yeah, because it becomes mission critical. Well, Eric, appreciate you coming on. My pleasure. Uh, thank you, and we'll be back for more later.